Hello, and welcome to Zoom with Zarni. Uh, today is a special Zoom with Zarni. It's my Sunday seminar series. This takes the place of my weekly interview uh, session that I usually have on Zoom with Zarni, and it's a more prepared presentation uh, that I am giving to you, the viewers and listeners, uh, regarding a election subject that is changing and important every year. Uh, last, I do this about once a month. Last month, I did a, a how to get on the ballot uh, Sunday seminar, and this year, or this month, in April, I'm doing a uh, how to file petitions and objections at the boards of elections for 2022. I'll do these once a month. And I prepare a little PowerPoint to go along with it. So if you're listening in, you're missing out on the PowerPoint, but check out uh, my Facebook and Twitter streams as I'll share the slides in a couple of days. Um, or you can go and see the live video presentation. And if you're watching this, uh, I'll be moving over to that presentation in a second. But this uh, month, I am talking about how to file petitions and objections at the boards of elections. And this is a little bit different this year than last year, because a lot of our petitions and objections are going to be filed at the New York State Board of Election. In even years, any seat that crosses a county line uh, has to go to the New York State Board of Elections as opposed to the Onondaga County Board of Elections. But uh, we'll, a lot of the processes are similar and the same, so we're going to go over that in our presentation. So without further ado, I'm going to share my screen to my presentation, and we are going to go on. So welcome to my Sunday seminar of how to file uh, petitions and objections at the Board of Elections. Filing petitions. The Board of Elections are your first stop in running for office. We have information on filing deadlines and office eligibility. While we are a bipartisan board, our mission is to help any citizen wanting to run for office, regardless of party. The Onondaga County Board of Elections is located at 1000 Erie Boulevard West in Syracuse, New York, and we're open Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., but there are a few exceptions to that, which we will go into. You can give us a call at 315-435-VOTE, go to Facebook at OCBOFE or Twitter, OCBOE, or email us elections at ongov. Net. And you can also find us on the web at onvote.net. Know your petition deadlines. Well, there are different types of petitions and they have different dates for circulating as well as filing deadlines. For 2022, the three types of petitions to be filed are designating for candidates filing under a recognized party, opportunity to ballot, which forces a write-in, and independent nominating petitions for candidates running without party backing. The designating petitions pa passing period is March 1st through April 7th, 2022. The filing periods are April 4th through the 7th of 2022. You cannot turn in petitions before April 4th, nor after April 7th for designating petitions. Opportunity to ballot petitions, the passing period started March 22nd and runs till April 14th. Filing periods are anytime before or on April 14th. So an opportunity ballot petition doesn't have a designated window. They can file petitions at any time uh, in, during their, before April 14th, but conceivably after March 22nd. And then independent nominating petitions. The passing period is April 19th through the May 31st. And the filing uh, period is May 24th through the 31st. 2022. Now, the differences in these petitions, which I went over in the how to get on the ballot seminar last month, is designating petitions are petitions for candidates uh, running on the major party lines, Democrat, Republican, working family, independent, uh, working family or conservative, no independence party anymore. Opportunity ballot petitions are people who are members of that party but they want to uh, force a write-in candidacy uh, instead of uh, a regular uh, candidacy where both names appear on the ballot. Um, the rules for this have changed over the last few years. I'm not really sure why anybody would do this opportunity ballot petition, other than the fact that maybe they missed the designating pet, uh, pet petition passing deadline and decided to go out 
after the designating petitions, but before the opportunity ballot to get enough signatures in that period. Because it's the same number of signatures. And there's a tactical disadvantage for running when you don't have your name on the ballot. And then, of course, the independent nominating petitions are petitions that are people who are not part of the Democratic, Republican, Conservative, Working Families Party and do not want to run on those lines and want to run on a party name that they decide. Uh, and we may see that this year with the governor's election with parties like the Libertarian, Green, and uh, uh, Independence Party all threatening to get back on the ballot. They have to do so in the governor's election. So we'll know on May 31st which uh, parties are trying to get back on the ballot uh, with, by designating a governor's candidate this year. And we'll go over that more when we do a preview of the primary election. How and where to file. The best way to file a petition is to do it in person. The Board of Elections will make a copy of your cover sheet that is time stamped and that will act as your receipt. If you make arrangements ahead of time, we can take a cursory look at your petitions. All petitions must be bound and numbered and some will need cover sheets. Any mailed petitions must be postmarked no later than the last day to file and received no later than two business days after the last day to file. Some races that cross county lines must be filed at the New York State Board of Elections in Albany, New York. So where out of Dauga County races file petitions, at the New York State Board of Elections, which is open till 5 p.m. every day, statewide races such as governor, lieutenant governor, comptroller, and senate will file petitions there. Those are mostly the independent nominating petitions and any candidacy that is running a primary because as all the, uh, all the other candidates that are party designated were done at the state convention and they don't have to walk petitions this year. New York State Senate 49, 52 and 55, they all cross county lines. And so they'll be filing their petitions up at the New York State Board of Elections. New York State Assembly 126 and 127th also counts crosses county lines. That's different this year. Uh, all of those are different with the redistricting. And the 127th used to file here in uh, Onondaga County and now files in the state. The races that are filing this year at the Onondaga County Board of Elections, we are open till 4.30 unless it's a filing deadline and then we're open to five. So on the last day of a filing period, we will be open till five to allow people to, to file petitions. New York State Assembly 128 and 129, Countywide races such as sheriff, county court, and family court that are up this year, and local races for the town and village offices that are up in this election cycle. Binding and numbering. All petitions must be bound together. For small petitions, this can be as simple as a staple. Larger petition packages can be split into separate volumes for easier packaging. There's your sheet number that you see on the side of the petitions. Our recommendations are that you staple petitions less than 10 pages long. For petitions 10 pages and over, use a two-hole punch at the top of the page and binder clips. Do not tape or spiral bound petitions. We will immediately remove that tape and spiral bounding so we can scan in those petitions. Split large petition packages into separate volumes. There is no legal uh, requirement here to do that, but we recommend no more than 100 sheets in a volume. Double check to make sure all sheets are numbered sequentially at the lower right hand corner. And sheets in separate volumes can continue in the same sequential order or start over in each volume. Cover sheets. Any petition with 10 or more pages must have a cover sheet for each volume that is being submitted. That cover sheet should have the same candidates and offices on it. Things to keep in mind. The BOE will help prepare a cover petition if a request is made before submitting petitions. The cover page should have the volume numbers filled out even if there's only one volume. A contact person on the cover sheet can be designated to cure deficiencies. However, if it is blank, we will contact the candidates listed. Petition corrections. Often campaigns will look to scrub petitions to make sure corrections to mistakes 
or omissions the petitions passers make. It's important to keep these guidelines in mind. Who can change? The changes in the dates must be made and initial by either the signer or the witness. Changes to the signature can only be made by the signer. Address and town corrections do not need to be initial and can be done by others. Changes should be an attempt to add clarification and not wholly altering data. And make sure you do those changes before you submit those petitions. Because if you submit those petitions without doing those changes, you may not be eligible to make those changes later on if an objection comes in. Witness statements. Before turning in petitions, you should make sure the witness statements are properly filled out. Alterations to witness statements are not allowed after filing. Affidavits can be filed when filing the petition to correct witness statements. So here's a witness statement, uh, normal on a petition, either signed by a regular person or a notary. Things to look for, make sure the witness statement is properly filled out. Only the witness can correct or add information above the signature line. The number of signatures is a fatal defect when missing. Undercounting will result in only the signatures counting that appear first. Witnesses must be a registered voter in the party, and that is on the petition somewhere in New York State to be a valid witness. Corrections on witness statements must be done by the witness. The Four Corners Verification. There is an assumption of validity for all petitions turned in at the OCDOE. We do a four corners check of the petition, check to make sure it is proper to file. These are the things readily apparent to a cursory examination. Things the Board of Election verifies. Listed candidates is registered to vote and eligible to run for that office, and including party registration. Cover sheet is attached to all petitions over 10 pages. Petition package is properly bound. Page numbers are sequential. Note, we do not count signatures unless it is readily apparent the petition is deficient. So what that means is that if you have a signature requirement of about a thousand signatures and you turn in four or five pages, we're gonna see that that's readily under uh, apparent that that is deficient in the number of signatures. And we will count to verify and throw that petition out. However, if we get multiple bounds and volumes, we do not actually count uh, each individual signature until objections come in. Uh, we have an assumption of validity that everything is correct and we wait for objections to come in to throw people off the ballot. Authorizations, acceptance and substitutions. For the conservative working families parties, these additional documents may be needed when filing petitions to have them be valid. Things to look for. If you're filing a designating petition for a recognized party, you are not a part of, or an independent nominating petition, you must also file an acceptance form with your petition by April 11th, 2022 for designating and June 3rd, 2022 for independent nominating. Parties allowing a candidate not of their party to file a designating petition must file an authorization, otherwise known as a wilson Pakula form, by April 11th, 2022. Candidates have until April 11th, 2022 to decline designating petitions and June 3rd, 2022 for independent petitions. The only way to get off a ballot by not moving death or being nominated for judge, usually. However, if there is a primary for uh, that race and you lose your major party primary, you can then within three days of the primary uh, decline your nominations and get off the ballot for the general election. That is a new rule that will be in place that was in place last year and will be in place. And it's only for if you are in a primary. So once you file, if you decide you don't wanna run, this is the time to actually decline. Substitutions can be made by April 15th, 2022 for designating petitions and June 6th, 2022 for independent nominating petitions. The committee to fill vacancies is the uh, committee that will decide who substitutes a candidate that declines their nomination. And then of course, judicial candidates and offices are exempt from these requirements as they can run on any party line without permission 
although they are still having the under the requirements to actually decline designations by the certain time period. Petition scans. For easiest access, the Onondaga County Board of Elections scans in all petitions received. We also put a daily list of petitions received on onvote.net. New York State BOE does the same on their website. Key points. The OCBOE and New York State BOE will upload a file each night to onvote.net and elections.ny.gov. It will be uploaded before we leave each night. Petitions will be scanned as soon as possible in order received. Petitions received late in the day may not be scanned until the next day. Objection period starts even if petitions are not yet scanned in. They start upon filing. Ask for scans of petitions from your party's commissioner or any staff, and they can be emailed to you free of cost. Board of, Ele Board of Election Objections. Board of Elections can receive objections to filed petitions. Objections are limited to several areas, objecting guidelines. Petition signers and witnesses can be challenged for wrong addresses, missing dates, or being enrolled in the wrong party. The Board of Elections will not rule on claims of fraud, such as non-matching signatures, or improper collection. That can only be done in judicial proceedings. Objections must follow the guidelines posted. Find our detailed procedures on onvote.net under election regulations, and you can find the New York State Board of Elections ones as well on their website. General objections. General objections are the first step to objecting to petitions at the Board of Elections. They must be filed within three business days of when a petition is filed. It preserves your right to make specific objections later on, often seen as a placeholder while campaigns and parties do more research. Does not obligate an objector to later file specifics. And if specifics aren't filed, the petition remains valid. So a general objection a lot of times will come in if a candidate wants more time to look at the petitions uh, and they want to withhold, or I'm sorry, they want to uh, have a placeholder in place in case they want to come up with specific objections. Specific objections is what the BOE uses to determine the validity of a challenge petition. <clears throat> Things to keep in mind must be filed within six business days of when a general objection is filed. Proof of service for specific objections on petition candidates must be filed with the objection. A cover sheet and listing of specific objections must be provided at the time of filing and cannot be supplemented later. Keys to the objections can be made. See the examples on our website. It must be the same objection on the general objection. So if a general objection comes in and a specific comes in after that, the same objection must be listed on the specific objection as was listed on the general objection. Hearings. Once a specific objection is filed, the OCBOE will do a preliminary finding, set up a hearing to make a final rule. There are different procedures for the New York State BOE and the Onondaga County BOE. Things to keep in mind. Bipartisan staff reviews the specific objections and makes recommendations on whether to uphold or deny the objections. A hearing date will be set and the objector and all candidates will be invited. At the hearing, all sides will be given an opportunity to present further evidence on the objections made and no, no further objections can be submitted. Commissioners will rule on each individual objection. It takes both commissioners to uphold an objection. That's at the Onondaga County Board of Elections. Uh, at the New York State Board of Elections, it's a little bit different. A bipartisan team of a hearing officer and a clerk will conduct the hearing and make rulings and their findings will be approved by the New York State Board of Elections commissioners at their monthly meeting. So the rulings at the Onondaga County Board of Elections will be immediately after the hearing and that will start your time frame for going to court on that uh, if you have been thrown off the ballot. At the New York State Board of Elections, it'll take a little bit more time for a final ruling to come in because the State Board of Elections must actually vote on that and they only meet once a month. So keep that in mind if you're objecting or considering court 
uh, at the uh, New York State Board of Elections. Once the ruling is done, that, that will determine ballot eligibility for the petition. We will count up remaining ballot signatures and, and if tied or over minimum signatures, it will be ruled valid. Court proceedings. The last vestige to challenge a petition or ruling from the OCBOE and New York State Board of Elections is court proceedings. Things to keep in mind. If your petition is challenged or you are challenging a petition and you want to avail yourself of the judicial system, it is advised that you get legal representation to do these filings. If you are challenging your petition, you must file court paperwork within 14 days of the last date of file petitions, regardless of whether the OCBOE or New York State BOE has made a ruling on the objections filed at the office. And this happens more often than not. If we get a lot of objections, we may not actually get to the ruling within that 14 day period. And at the New York State BOE, the final ruling may not be done until the commissioners meet in the next month. So if you want to go to court to throw somebody off the ballot, it's suggested that you do a what's called a dual track uh, objection, where you file in both court and the OCBOE and New York State BOE to preserve your right to take the boards of elections to court if they rule a petition is valid and you wanna challenge their rulings. Of course, if you only file in court, that is, uh, that is okay as well. Uh, then the court will handle all of the uh, objections. And if you, only, if you file at the New York State Board of, or if you only file at the Board of Elections, either OCBOE or New York State BOE, then the final ruling will be there. Candidates who petitions are ruled invalid or thrown off the ballot at OCBOE or New York State BOE have three days from the ruling to file for judicial intervention. So at the OCBOE, the ruling will be that day as the commissioners are uh, a part of the hearing process and will vote on each individual ruling and make a ruling by the end of that day. Uh, and at the uh, um, State Board of Elections, the rulings won't come until the State Board of Elections meets at their next meeting, uh, usually uh, you know, in early May uh, or, or maybe sometimes in mid-April uh, to uh, rule on specific objections and rule people on or off the ballot. Now, this is not a live uh, Q&A, so that I know there's no Q&A available uh, here live, but if you have some questions, please feel free to contact me Put a comment in the threads, I will answer them or uh, send an email to me or direct message to me on any of my social medias. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Or you can give us a call at the Onondaga County Board of Elections at 315-435-VOTE. And that concludes my Sunday seminar for this month for how to file objections and petitions for 2022. Uh, next week, um, I will be continuing my uh, wonky Wednesday. Uh, I will have um, uh, the Common Council Second District up as part of the Syracuse Redistricting uh, focus. Uh, the Syracuse Redistricting Commission is continuing meetings on the redistricting. So I'm taking deep dives into the city districts uh, over the next uh, six weeks. Uh, I already did the city of Syracuse um, citywide and Common Council one last week. So the next week is Common Council 2. I'll have a commissioner in car on Monday. We'll be talking uh, mainly about uh, uh, the, uh, um, the filing periods as well, but also about uh, uh, you know, some other uh, election topics. We'll see what comes up on Monday. Uh, and finally, on uh, Friday, I will be having as my guest uh, for Zoom and Zarni, um, the executive director of Empire Indivisible. Uh, and uh, she is uh, uh, going to be coming on talking about how, what Indivisible, the group Indivisible that is all over the country, but what they're doing in New York State to promote democracy. And, uh, and, and it's good. I think that's going to be a great conversation. Uh, so stay tuned. Uh, remember to go to DustinZarni.com and you can subscribe and get all of the uh, content that I provide, as well as any election news uh, that's out there. Um, and it's always going to be free. I pay for it out of my own pocket. I take no outside money. It's part of my uh, voter education efforts. 
uh, here in Onondaga County and New York State. So thank you very much and enjoy your Sunday. Bye-bye.